The first step to get going is to define both of these products as stacks. But let's identify the product components first. The first product is made up of two web services, that is a front-end and a back-end. Uh, it uses MongoDB to store the data and the front-end needs to be securely exposed to the users. The second product is made up of a single web application and an S3 bucket to store the uploaded images. Now let's see how to express this information as a stack. First and foremost, a stack is a Git repository. So in this case, we have hosted the uh, stacks in GitHub. A stack has a directory for each resource type. For example, MongoDB can be defined by placing a JSON file inside the Mongo instances directory. A Mongo instance in this case is named demo mongo and a few metadata is provided using the facets stack definition language. A couple of load balances are also defined inside the ingress directory. One is for the user facing applications to use and the other is a password protected load balancer uh, to be consumed by the company staff. Now moving on to the web service definitions. The web services are named backend and frontend. The backend is defined by application metadata like uh, the image to use, the environment variable, network ports, uh, scaling configuration, etc. Uh, the image right now is a fixed image, while it can also be integrated with CI systems that can uh, hook up with the Facets API. The backend web service also lines up a credential request uh, to access the Mongo database. This request is fulfilled when a cluster is launched and the username and password is communicated to the application using the uh, environment variables as configured. The front-end application is defined in a similar fashion, except that this time it needs to be exposed to the outside world, which is why we have an ingress rule defined. And here we pick the load balancer, which is the demo ingress load balancer, and, and add the ingress rule. In addition, we have also defined a rock mongo so that the company internals can uh, have a look at the mongo database. And this time we use the tools uh, load balancer which is password protected. Moving to the second software product, uh, the only difference that you would notice here is that we have a new S3 instances directory which contains the S3 demo bucket defined. And the web service now would have a credential request to access the S3 bucket. Now that we have defined both of these stacks, we can register these on Fetch's console and create a few clusters out of it. A stack can be registered on the Fetch's control plane using read-only Git credentials. On the landing page, you can see all the stacks that have been already registered and the awesome to do uh, stack and the awesome uploader stack has already been registered using my read only credentials now i'll go ahead and create a, a cluster using the awesome to do uh, stack so while creating a cluster the basic details uh, that you need to provide first are the name of the cluster i'll name it staging one select the time zone uh, and a release stream the release stream would determine what builds get picked uh, while uh, in use with a CI system. Now we get into the cloud cloud configurations. Uh, currently AWS is the only supported cloud. Uh, we need to provide a CIDR range to use for the cluster. Uh, we'll select uh, the Singapore region. Uh, we need uh, an IAM role uh, with I am role and external ID with which uh, facets will authenticate uh, with AWS so that it can launch uh, clusters into your AWS account. Next is uh, selecting the instance type to be used with uh, a spot fleet based autoscaler that will be used uh, along with Kubernetes. You can op optionally set a CD parent which would put the cluster into a CD pipeline. Since this is the first cluster, uh, this is not a valid option right now. Uh, you can also set a packing density for uh, the pods in your cluster. This can be a cost saving measure for let's say QA or staging clusters. Uh, we can set a schedule, release schedule. So uh, we are going to set a schedule for every 30th minute. 
uh, a required sign off would mean that uh, a manual sign off is required for any stack changes to land into this cluster uh, so that's it and uh, we can click create and we are ready to go now uh, according to the release schedule uh, automatically all the stack changes would be pushed into uh, your cluster so the first run uh, would take some time but launch all of your infrastructure uh, and the applications and we'll see how that works Once a cluster is created, fesis.cloud deploys the infrastructure as defined in the stack into the configured AWS account. The details regarding the releases to a cluster can be obtained from the releases page. The detailed view lists down all the applications that have been deployed and what image has been used for each of those. In addition, it also lists down all the infrastructure resources that have been created as a part of the release. A broad overview of the infrastructure is that a VPC houses a Kubernetes cluster and applications, databases and other auxiliary services are deployed in the Kubernetes cluster. The cluster uses a spot fleet powered auto scaling group with an on-demand fallback. The other resources created include passwords, network security groups, ingress rules, SSL certificates and the list goes on. Let's just see the application in action. It is a simple uh, to-do list. Let's also notice that uh, these, uh, the application is already SSL uh, protected. The certificate is issued by Let's Encrypt and it will be auto-renewed by Fesis.cloud well before its expiry. Coming to the observability features, every Fesis powered cluster comes with a complete open metric stack powered by Prometheus. The metrics are accessible from Grafana dashboard within the uh, Fesis control plane. Here we have an ingress dashboard giving us the request volume, connections, success rate, etc. Additionally, alerts are also auto-generated. The alerts may be Kubernetes related, which are generic or specific to the resources that we have defined like the MongoDB replication lag. It involves the definition of the alert itself and any active alerts. For now, there are no active alerts in the new cluster that we have created. Moving on to other management features, any cluster specific overrides to a stack can also be performed from the control plane. For example, in this case, we have set an override for the backend application and set its size to large instead of the default medium. This would determine how much CPU and memory is allocated to the pod depending on the stack definition. Moving on to disaster recovery features. A point in time snapshot for every database are listed on the DR page. So let's take a look at the demo Mongo snapshots. All the snapshots are listed and with a single click, we can revert back to uh, any particular point in time snapshot. We may also use the dashboard to issue a hotfix to any application outside of the regular release schedule. Select the application and confirm. Also for debugging purposes, uh, developers might need access to the Kubernetes cluster uh, uh, directly. Uh, a temporary credential is generated based on the user's uh, uh, privileges in fetches.cloud. This avoids the hassle of having to implement another user management system. And it is important to note that this credential auto expires within the 24 hours window uh, uh, from the generation time. This has been fetches.cloud in action in a nutshell. Thanks for watching.